Good morning, fam. I just made myself a nice hot hazelnut coffee. Mmm. Come get ready with me today. I'm going to be doing a full face of hot new drugstore and affordable makeup. Now the hype of some of these have died down because I did prep this video weeks ago when I was prepping for my move, but the excitement has been chipping away at me to try these products because there's some really new exciting stuff that I just need to get on my face. So let's do it. Make sure if you're getting ready, grab yourself a drink and let's get ready together. <laughs> So the first product that I have today is for the eyebrows. This is the Makeup Revolution. Can't find the name of it. It's in the shade medium brown, but I honestly don't know what this is called. It will be on the screen right now. Oddly enough, the name of the product is not on this, but basically one end has a clear brow gel and then the other end has a very oddly shaped pencil here. You'll see it's really slanted don't even really know how to go about applying this this is really weird right i have to say you guys i feel like makeup revolution is upping their game i've never really liked pretty much any of their products with a few exceptions but the new stuff that they recently launched oh it looks so good okay let's try this so i guess i'm gonna use the slanted tip here to get to the top of the brow. It's really sharp and nice now, though I do wonder what it's gonna be like and how this shape wears down. But I'm liking it so far. Medium brown has the slightest hint of, oh, I just hit myself in the face, hint of warmth. But I feel like with this very odd shape, I am getting a lot of precision. I'm using the flat side to kind of fill in more. I can definitely see more of that warmth as I fill in more. So medium brown has some warmth. That's the tricky part with brow pencils. I feel like it's difficult to find one without any warmth. So interesting, I feel like you use the flat side to fill in and then you use the side of the pencil to get some shape. I'm really interested to see how this wears down with more use. I'm just going to take a spoolie and run through this, make sure it doesn't overblend. It doesn't seem to be, honestly. It's fading a little bit, but I'm not upset by this pencil side. And normally I hate a creamy eyebrow pencil. This isn't too creamy. It's also not dry like I like it, but anyways, I'm going to take the clear brow gel now. And I'm brushing my brows at a slant. Honestly, this did a really nice, quick, easy job directing the brow hairs. Ooh, I hope this dries down as I brush it because this could be the first Makeup Revolution product that I've enjoyed in a long, long time. Let's work on complexion now. This new product you guys are going to freak over. Every brand is trying their hand at duping this Charlotte Tilbury product, but Catrice just launched these Soft Glam Filter Fluid. Honestly, these look more like the e.l.f. than the Charlotte Tilbury. I have to try these. They're $10. This was definitely the product that I was probably the most excited to play with. I have the Charlotte Tilbury here just to see side by side how they compare, but price-wise, $10, $50. Big difference. I have two different shades, medium and light medium. I think light medium is probably my shade. So same applicator. It's thinner, I feel like. Definitely a lot thinner, more watery. I'm gonna compare two to number three from Charlotte Tilbury. Yeah, Charlotte Tilbury, thicker and definitely more instant coverage not as watery. There's definitely more of a glazy glow. This is also more yellow compared to the peachiness of the Charlotte Tilbury, but that's just that particular shade. I also have medium, which I don't think I'm going to be using today from Catrice, but I do just want to see medium. This one has a little bit more coverage. I feel like maybe it was just that light one, but this is too dark for me today. This is a summer color for me. If I can't tell an immediate difference, I will put on the Charlotte Tilbury, but 
the undertone very different but that's just the particular shade this is how i like to apply my charlotte tilbury so i'm going to use my hourglass brush that i just featured in my monthly favorites no i just realized i did not make a tiktok version of that i need to pull those products back out okay so this is like a little dark on me and it is wiping away definitely not as strong as the charlotte tilbury the glow is more glass as well i don't know if you can see that but it just looks more wet and glassy on my skin which honestly it looks really really nice but it doesn't give that same level of coverage that the charlotte tilbury gives or even the elf the elf actually gives really good coverage as well i'm gonna do it we'll do a side by side even though this is a full face of drugstore i do for experimental purposes need to see how this charlotte tilbury is she's thicker for sure my goodness i don't know if you guys can see that but i do feel like the catrice has a little bit more of a wet looking kind of glow which you might be into putting on just a little bit more so the glow is definitely different but honestly to the naked eye a random person on the street isn't going to be able to tell the difference between the two charlotte tilbury is a little bit more coverage a little bit more i don't want to say matte but it has more of like a satin finish comparing it to the catrice which is a little bit more wet you guys can see pretty nice alternative i can't say these are a dupe quite yet but for ten dollars i'm not mad at the base that this gave my skin for my base slash foundation it definitely had a girl's dressing because there are two that i'm super excited about so also from catrice we have this new drop tinted serum now this is in the same packaging as my all-time favorite full coverage foundation from the drugstore also by catrice so they now have it in a tinted serum option it's only ten dollars but remember earlier how i said makeup revolution is killing it lately they launched this skin silk luminous serum foundation which also looks incredible this packaging is so luxe it's giving like kind of kkw i don't know which one i want to do I could do both, but we do have different bases for both. Let's just do it. I will put these in as speed reviews and give you guys updates as I wear these individually. But I've just, I haven't been able to really test new makeup amidst this move. So I just want to put it all on my face. Now, Catrice did send these to me, so I'm more of a neutral but they have like a really warm looking color and a really cool looking color. Let's see how 20W pulls on me. We can always mix if necessary. So she's wet. <laughs> okay, that's really, really yellow. We could make it work though. I'm gonna just put in a dot. And I mean a dot of 30C, which is cool. Definitely is more pinky, and I think mixing these will give me my desired outcome, more or less. So this is the Tinted Serum. It's only $10 from Catrice. I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to use this side of my Hourglass brush, and we're going to pat this in. I have high expectations for this product in particular because I love Catrice base products. Based on this literal first blend out, I am not, not disappointed. It's blending out really easily and it's giving some coverage. I honestly was not expecting that because it is a tinted serum, but it's giving a light medium coverage here. Wait, that looks gorgeous. Look at this with the light zone how pretty is that sitting on my skin it has a similar way of sitting on the skin as the fuller coverage version why is nobody talking about this at least from the angle that i'm looking at this is looking beautiful i think taking a damp beauty blender kind of pushing it into the skin wait i'm so into that i'm gonna take a little bit more just what i have left over on my hand Put it on a second layer now the day is young this has been on my face for a total of three minutes 
but I'm really, really liking that. That's looking quite high-end on my face. I don't know, there's just a certain finish you can tell with a more expensive complexion product, and it's giving it to me. Now, Curiosity got the cat. I needed to try the Revolution Skin Silk Luminous Serum Foundation because this packaging, stunning. Now, I find with this brand, really weird undertones on me. Let's see if they corrected that because I feel like they seem to be improving things. So hopefully that's the case with this. So this foundation, you can get at Ulta. It's $14, not a bad price for how ballsy drugstore seems to be getting nowadays, like $20, $18. I'm seeing this at the drugstore and I'm like, <laughs> I remember back in the day we'd used to do a full face of $20 makeup, like everything for $20 at the drugstore. Anyways, $14. This is supposed to give a softest silk, lightest air, powered by skincare light to medium coverage. Okay, these are all of like the big marketing claims that they're doing right now with a lot of foundations like these. I'm using F6, which is supposed to be light, with neutral undertone. Okay, let's see. Now, I feel like Revolution products oxidize like crazy. I feel like that's okay. Hopefully it doesn't turn pink like a lot of Revolution products do on me. Otherwise, one side of my face will be a lot darker than the other. Feels pretty lightweight. It looks quite liquidy. I did wipe this brush from Hourglass off in between. Huh really really thin feeling i'm liking both of these this one gives less coverage than the catrice this says it gives a light to medium coverage but the catrice instantly gave me more coverage it's not a bad thing but just a difference in the formulas i really like how lightweight this foundation is feeling i do have a pump on my hand and i'm kind of going in even though i probably shouldn't need a whole pump for just half of my face and i'm gonna build it up right here on an acne scar that i have get around the nose okay and then i'm going to just to be fair use my damp beauty blender just to kind of push everything into the face just smoothing out everything this one looks really nice too it has a lighter look on the skin compared to the catrice which is interesting the catrice looks a little heavier on the skin but it also looks smoother than the revolution both look good but the revolution is definitely giving lighter coverage here so far both of these are a hit i'm liking these for concealer these are not new i believe i've actually used these before but it's been a long long time my mom got these sent to her house in pr so i just got these now months later but this is the koki double time full coverage concealer just a really good affordable brand so i thought i'd try these out i have this light neutral shade but it looks really pale so i'm also gonna try tan peach let's see yeah tan peach looks good i'm just gonna put a little bit this seems a little bit of a drier formula like it might have a quicker dry down and this is light neutral i'm just going to keep that a little bit more on the inner part of my face bk beauty a506 yeah it's definitely giving full coverage it's more of a drier feel but that's compensated by the full coverage that it can get so i don't want to set my under eyes too heavily with this oh my gosh look at that though this could potentially be a tart shape tape dupe i mean this is coverage right here if you pick up this concealer you don't need to apply as much as i did i was not expecting that level of coverage honestly like wow 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 i hope this wears well since it's drier it, it could go on both ways like it could wear really well if it sets down and i don't over powder but it could also look thick and cakey and crack up on my under eyes I don't even know, have I tried this concealer before? Full coverage, I'm loving it today. Now for blush, I got these sent to me from Profusion. These look really, really good. These are the Profusion Blush Hour Soft Matte Liquid Blushes. They're $6 on the Profusion website, but $4.98 at Wally World Walmart. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna go with this color. It has a pretty good range of lighter to deeper shades. I'm going to go with Rosé right here. I actually have some new eyeshadow palettes from Profusion that I need to try. 
Wait, I didn't see how pretty is this cap. It has the sparklies. I'm unsure of coverage level here. <laughs> it has that like she glam packaging. Interesting. I just wonder like with packaging like this though, how can I make sure the product gets on the, the sponge, you know? I feel like I need a applicator, you know, like a lip gloss applicator. Okay, anyways. Don't have any powder on my face and I'm always scared with these products. You just never know how much pigment they're gonna deliver. Okay, this one does seem to sheer out, right? Okay, we can go a lot more ham with this product. Boom, boom. I'm using a BK Beauty. When ooh, night. At least with this rosé shade, it's not an intimidating level of pigment. Okay, pretty, nice and soft. I normally tend to go ham with these products, so I'm scared. I'm trying not to today. This has a little bit more of a dewy finish to it as well. I feel like it looks the slightest bit wet on the cheek. Does not seem to be disturbing anything underneath, which is good. However, I don't have any powder, but I'm not going to play with fire today. Okay, honestly, five bucks, not mad at it. Not wowed at it. It's not a liquid blush that's knocking my socks off, but for five dollars, <laughs> pretty nice. Hopefully this wear is good. I can't help it. I just, I need more color. More, more, more. I'm sure if I went in with a darker color, it would need to be layered on a lot less. So if you're fair, rosé, you might really like. Yummy, okay. This is interesting. I don't know how far I'm gonna go with this. This is from Flower Beauty and it's the Jet Set Invisible Powder Spray. It's a powder in a spray format. This spray on setting powder helps control shine and absorb excess oil, leaving skin with a soft matte finish. Shake me up and spray six to eight inches from the face in a sweeping motion. This is kind of scary. I feel like this could make or break us right now, but it's quite a unique product. It's giving Dior Air Flash. Like maybe I should apply this with a brush, but we're putting this all the way up to the chest. <sighs> I shook it up. Let's go. And it said go like this. Please don't get my hair messed up. I'm not really seeing the powder. I feel like this is like a mattifying setting spray. Like, do you see anything? That's not powder. Okay, as it dries down, it becomes a powder. Whoa, wait, that's weird. Look at the inside of my wrist. It like sprays as a liquid and it dries down as a powder. Okay, okay. I understand the product better. Let me do that again. What is happening? I feel like it's gonna turn into a powder now on my face. So let's let it set. I do feel like the powder is sitting on the facial hair that I have, like, you know, peach fuzz. So this is emphasizing peach fuzz, but it did dry down as a powder and it did mattify my makeup. Got some on my lashes too, so it's, my lashes are a little bit white. I. Do not know what to make of this product. I It's really cool how it's working. Is it looking as good then as if I went in with a regular powder? No, but the fact that I just sprayed this on and it did mattify my face and I can see the powder now, felt like a liquid going on my face, but now looks like a powder. Oh, the jury is out on that, but that was really cool. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty and Nikki LaRose N15. And I'm just gonna pat to see if I can get it off of my peach fuzz. Now it's off of my peach fuzz and my skin looks smooth again. Okay, now that I did that, my makeup looks really good. It looks nice and set. That's wild. <gasps> this is such a weird product, but I think I like it. Okay, I'm gonna put on some bronzer and under eye powder because I don't have anything new, so BRB. This has become quite the full coverage look. The makeup, like, she thick on my face. Doesn't look bad. My skin actually looks quite beautiful, but it's just funny that we use serum foundations, but I'm full coverage. Especially, I went in with the Maybelline Fit Me on my under eyes, which is full coverage on top of the concealer, 
but I wanted to give the concealer a fair chance of wear. And then I also went in with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, which is beautiful. So let's finish off with highlight on the face. Now I've mentioned these, I don't know if on my channel before, but definitely in short form. Makeup Revolution, I'm telling you their products have been so interesting, launched these Beam Bright Highlighters. These look much more expensive than they actually are. I've used these a good number of times so I can give you my review. This was just like the newest highlighter that I had at the time. Let's use Rose Luster today. Now some people were asking if this is a dupe for the Rare Beauty. It's not. It's not as smooth and silky as the Rare Beauty but look at that. How pretty is that? I'm gonna use a Rare Beauty highlighting brush though. But no, this is not the same consistency or anything as the Rare Beauty. It just looks similar because of how it's sitting in the pan. So honestly, these are a decent highlighter. They aren't anything groundbreaking like Rare Beauty is still the business. This is not as smoothing as the Rare Beauty. It also will emphasize fine lines and texture, but that's not necessarily like a bad thing or something to write off about it because by nature, that's what highlighters do. But there are some that just look smoother on the face than others. This is not the smoothest highlight on the market, but it's an affordable price. I do think they look prettier and nicer than they actually are, but it's not a bad option, but also the drugstore has some really great highlight options. This is not an all-time favorite drugstore recommendation highlight, but it gets the job done. And again, I'm still impressed with what Revolution Beauty or Makeup Revolution is doing with their packaging and their formulas seem to have improved. Even though this isn't an all-time favorite, you have to run to the drugstore to try these. I thought it would be worth mentioning so that you can partake in this evolution here of Makeup Revolution. So that's how these are looking on the face. I'm making sure I get it really blended in for as seamless as a look of possible. But that's gorgeous. And just like that, we're on to the eyes. I'm intrigued by these Catrice eyeshadow sticks. These are aloe vera eyeshadow sticks and they're supposed to be long wearing. The color range looks incredible. I've been on an eyeshadow stick kick. The other day I just used the Laura Mercier caviar sticks and they are incredible. So I wanna see how the Catrice do, but I'm also going to supplement some crease colors here with this hard candy monochromatic shadows in the shade moods it's this pretty mauvey palette i have all of the colors of these but i've actually never used these they aren't new or anything but they're even tinier than the elf packaging and this color right here is stunning or is this name purr because it's p-u-r-r -R. i don't know if it's okay so these are the moods monochromatic shadows and this is the shade purr Anyways, I'm going to use some of this in my crease. So I'm just going to make sure my concealer is blended out. How it creases on my eyelid doesn't say much about the concealer. All concealers crease in my eyelid. But I'm just going to go in with this shade right here. Like I said, I've never used these shadows, so I don't know if they're good or not. I'm, I'm not a drugstore eyeshadow person. I feel like I can tell the difference. I feel like they don't wear as long. They don't blend quite right. They blend away is what I mean. So my expectations aren't high for this, but Hard Candy is super affordable. So in a pinch, something like this hopefully would be good. So this shade is taking a little bit of blending, but not bad. Usually longevity is an issue with drugstore. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then I'm just gonna use the same brush. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more precision. Refer 15 mini, darker shade. We'll just get a little bit in the outer corner. This is a drier formula and it's not building up in pigment as I reapply. There's a little bit, but not to the degree that it looks in pan. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the matte shadows today. We'll get a little bit of this on the lower lash line as well. Okay, not groundbreaking quality, but it definitely did what I needed it to do today, so. We're not mad at that. It doesn't give the depth level that you see in pan, and I'm just talking about the mattes here. It's definitely softer, but got the job done. For a few bucks, we'll take it. Okay, so let's get into these aloe vera eyeshadow sticks. So interesting. I have four shades. Golden toffee, okay, nice and creamy. 
Olive Glam. These don't really go back down, so be careful how much you roll them up. Touch of Rose. That's pretty. It almost looks a little bit more bronzy to me. And then Lavender Brown. Ooh, that's pretty. Lavender Brown is quite dark, but gorgeous. Ooh, I hope these are good. I've been on the hunt for a super good eyeshadow stick from the drugstore. We're going to use Touch of Rose. Really lovely, creamy application. It does dry down relatively quickly. And not the most blendable. Like, I'm thinking about the Laura Mercier, where you can literally take a brush and blend out the product. This one kind of sticks to where you apply it. We'll get that on the lower lash line, inner corner. Not bad, but not groundbreaking because I don't like the lack of blendability of these. I'm just gonna go in with my crease brush. I didn't add ad any additional color, but I'm just bringing it back to life. The job is done with these. Catrice also has these Highlighting Hero Duo pencils. I normally really like colors like these. I want to see how daylight does. Essentially, one side is matte. Ooh, creamy, creamy. And then one side is shimmery. This side is not as creamy. They have it in gold and in white. I'm using the pink one. So I'm gonna use the shimmery side. Not looking that impressive. Get a little bit of the shimmer right here. And then I'm gonna use the matte side. And I normally like to use a product like this to clean up under here. This side, the matte side, for some reason is more creamy. Then I'm taking a synthetic brush. This one is from Sigma. It was in collaboration with Beauty Bird. I'm just gonna blend it underneath the brow. Ooh, I like the matte side of this. It's perfect for cleaning up and highlighting the underbrow. The shimmery side, not as impressed by, but it's just a few bucks. I like it, that did what I needed it to do. I'm gonna have to clean up this brow off camera so when it looks better when I come back, that's what I did off camera. For eyeliner, there's lots of Catrice in this video, but I'm gonna use the Calligraphy Pro Precise Matte Eyeliner. Ooh, this is nice and thin. I'm just gonna press it along my lash line. I wanna keep it pretty thin. And then extend. Oh, it's losing a little bit of that wet feel. Very easy to get a nice thin line with this though. I just added three lash clusters on each eye and did a little bit of the L'Oreal Panorama Mascara, which is a new one. I've been enjoying this one as well. Let's finish off with the lips. These products have been sitting on my two try shelf for a while, so I'm happy to finally be able to get around to them. These are the Hard Candy Insta Pout Lip Liners. I love a good drugstore lip liner. I'm going to use the shade Perfect Match, which looks like a pretty nude lip liner. So one side of these is going to have the product. The other side has a brush, if you want. It's a very cheap, stiff, hard brush, but it has one. <laughs> My lips are a little dry, but that's a good test of these products. So this is pretty close to my natural lip color, a little bit more brown. Very creamy. I'm gonna see if this sets down. So I'm just gonna put that on my hand. The shade's definitely for a natural lip day, but really pretty. Then remember, you have some playtime with the brush if you wanna blend it, especially for darker colors. But this next product I was really curious about, it's also from Hard Candy. These are the Instapout Lip Melt. So I think these are going to be like lip glosses in a stick. Beforehand, I already picked out two colors I was in between. I think we'll go with the more natural one, but this is Meet Cute and this is my type. And you can see they're like the lip gloss in a stick form. The packaging of them is cute and pink. And they're the one where you can't pull it back down, so don't twist it up too high. Let's see. Again, this is my type. So it is like lip gloss in a stick, and it is melting a little bit, which this is a really popular style of lip product right now. This one can be a little goopy, but it's not as goopy as a lot of others. Ooh, that's so pretty. Really hydrating. 
I love this lip color, my type, really gorgeous. Oh wait, I just realized we're like, we're done with the face, give me a second. <laughs> so here's the final look, a full face of drugstore slash affordable makeup. All new stuff that I tried today and for it being a full face of new products, all of these came together really well. I feel like this was a very successful video. I do wanna give a couple updates. So this Makeup Revolution, brow duo. I like the pencil side, but the gel side, it definitely fell. It doesn't hold as well as I was hoping. It didn't dry down to be like hard or stiff, which is nice, but it also caused my brows to kind of fall down, not where I placed them. So eh, on this officially. I think I'm really liking this Catrice Soft Glam Filter. I'm going to have to obviously test it more, but I think it's a really nice glowy, glassy kind of base. And then so far, loving, absolutely loving both of these from Revolution here and Catrice. I can't wait to see how these wear because they applied beautifully. And I am quite impressed with this Koki full coverage concealer. It's a little bit dry, so if you don't like a full coverage drier concealer, you might not like this. Now I did set this with one of my favorite powders but it's looking really nice. So full coverage queen, that's a good drugstore option. Jury's still out on these. I liked this first one. I hope that it wears well, but I wanna play with some more colors. I don't even know what to say about this powder in a spray bottle. For a powder in a spray bottle, this is really cool. Is it better than my favorite powders? I don't know, but it did set my makeup, so I'm not mad at it. Uh, these Makeup Revolution highlights, I've used them a lot at this point. They are nice. They are not the end all be all of all drugstore highlighters, but they're nice options and I just love the direction that Makeup Revolution is going with their products. Eh, on this, it got the job done, but it is already fading. But you know, if you have a few bucks to spare and you need some eyeshadow, this gets the job done. Again, I'm eh on these eyeshadow sticks. They have a creamy application, but they don't set down. They feel a little sticky, honestly. Eh, these, yeah, no, these are not set down. The money is still on the Laura Mercier, which I know is a very different price point. I would say these are so far a decent drugstore stick. So if you're looking at the drugstore, the Catrice is a good way to go, but it's not a good alternative for any high-end eyeshadow sticks because I just think the high-end eyeshadow sticks are better. I'm liking the Catrice Highlighting Hero Duo Pencil, but the shimmer side's a little stiff. The matte side definitely has more creaminess. The matte liner dried out as I was using it, so I'm not a huge fan of this. I got a really precise line, which I like, but it's just not wet enough. Now the lip liner from Hard Candy, she does set, which I'm liking, so early yet, but so far I'm liking these and they have a lot of awesome colors. And I'm also really, really liking the Hard Candy lip melts. This is a really great drugstore alternative to those kind of lip gloss in a stick form. Overwhelmingly so, most of these products are a win. A couple products are like eh for me, but there were no bad products in today's video. And for a full face of affordable makeup, I'm really not mad at how this turned out. Now, I will update you at the end of the day to tell you how the makeup ended up wearing. And of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I will be featuring all of these products in speed reviews as I test them more and get to know them better. Huge success overall as a video. If you've tried any of these products, let me know down below. I actually already have new drugstore products that I've been dying to test out that have come to me in the last few weeks. But I, especially with the complexion that I used today, have been weighing heavy on my mind to test, so I loved it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.